Hi guys and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Ella Devar and I'm a registered dietitian. Today I want to quickly go over some of the diet trends that I covered in my latest news segment on NBC. As a longevity dietitian, it's my job to provide quality education for the public and for people to be able to assert and know exactly what they should be eating and why. And NBC invited me to go over some of the viral diet trends that we see in social media and those people who are promoting it very often are not diet specialists. So that's why I wanted to elaborate a little bit on what I said and what I covered in the news episode. Statistics show that 49% of Americans, half of the American populations, have either tried or are still trying to lose weight using diets. Diets are ubiquitous. There's so many. Every other person now tries to lose weight using some sort of diet, and if every other person does that, that very uh, highly makes you the person who's looking for a diet to lose weight or achieve some sort of result. And let's face it, I used to be that person too. I, as a young immigrant in, the, in New York, I thought everyone else is much smarter than me and I tried to get their um, advice uh, or like you know follow their recommendations and that very often led to even more confusion. I've tried every diet and that's why today I love helping people to understand their body and to uh, really look within for the answers. But let's begin with the navigating the diet trends. Number one is carnivore and keto. High protein, high fat intake, nothing really wrong with the protein and fat on its own, especially if you are getting the high quality of it from real foods and not from margarine. But what happens is when this diet got promoted uh, by TikTok and, and Instagram influencers, uh, the carnivore diet specifically involves uh, large quantities of high fat animal proteins, including liver and organ meats, which is again great on its own as a product. But the only problem that I see with that is that the approach is actually tells you to eliminate all of the fiber rich vegetables and grains. And as much as I am not a huge fan of grains, but fiber from vegetables, from fruits, from berries, from beans and legumes is essential, you know? And this is something that when we do incorporate those fibers and those high fiber fruits and vegetables and legumes, it creates a more sustainable approach. Because let's face it, a lot of people see the results with carnivore and keto, but most people are not able to sustain it. And this is why I'm telling you that this diet approach is not something that we should be learning or promoting, you know, what we should be promoting is the high quality uh, intake of nutrient dense foods, specifically the ones that are high in vitamins and minerals, fiber and antioxidants, which happens to be berries and fruits, and our healthy gut microbiome, our digestion depends on the diversity of those high fiber vegetables. So yeah, definitely, um, use the carnivore as a base but build up on it by incorporating high fiber berries fruits and vegetables the next one that i talked about on tv is juice cleansing and the talk show um host uh, wanted my confirmation that the celery juice had that that her mother had is actually of you know value and i agreed on that i do like green juices i recommend them because they're low in calories and they're high in antioxidants and they're low in sugar. I do like vegetable juices as long as it's not like tomato and carrot juice. There's nothing wrong with them except for uh, the ones that are, come from concentrate and they have long shelf life and they're not fresh. Specifically tomato juice, it's very high in carbohydrates. So the only thing that I would want you to do with that is to dilute it. The rest, the rest of the problems with juice cleansing is the same with uh, the previous diets, is that it emphasizes the short-term solution from which you cannot expect a long-term result. Even when you do see the weight loss and the detox and the clear skin and the juice cleanse transform someone's lives, it, let's be honest. When it, as soon as you're done with your juice cleanse and you're back to eating your regular diet, 
what happens? You gain all the weight back because you didn't learn how to sustain your results. That's the problem that I see with juicing in addition to an even bigger problem that most of the weight loss on the juice cleanse is the muscle mass weight, weight loss because the juice cleansing, they are uh, void of protein, fats, and fiber, okay? So you're basically fasting and spiking your blood sugar once in a while and that's great, but um, you know, as soon as you stop that juice fast and juice cleanse, um, you have to be very smart and do, talk to your dietitian on how to sustain your weight loss results for more than a week or two, however long uh, you know the person is juicing. Next is plant-based diets that are promoted by the longevity science right now, bloggers and on TikTok. You know, more and more people are becoming aware of the climate change and these concerns of sustainability. They really push people to think more about how what we're eating affects our planet. And I love uh, supporting our health and the wellness of our environment by supporting local farmers and specifically those that practice regenerative agricultural uh, traditional agricultural practices and that's what really helps the quality of our soil and therefore improves the quality of our produce so i highly encourage you if you're concerned with the environment really support your local farmers shop locally and talk to your farmers see what kind of practices they use and find the foods that are that are you know locally grown but i am not plant-based myself and i am not vegan and there's a lot of um, statistics on the national institute of health how most people who are vegan they are deficient in some of the important um, nutrients such as omega-3 such as vitamin d vitamin b group um, iron zinc really test your blood see if this is something that you can sustain talk to your doctor because you might need supplementation and if that's your way to you know solving your health and the health of the planet that's definitely a choice for me i'd rather get my nutrition from food for example i don't supplement with omega-3 because i always make sure that i eat omega-3 seafood uh, like mackerel sardines anchovies and salmon as well as the nuts and seeds like hemp pumpkin seeds um, and uh, walnuts so that's my choice and if you don't eat seafood um, that's definitely uh, you know up to you but you might have to supplement and it's important to ensure the adequate intake of for like a well-balanced and even if you're vegetarian you know that all the essential amino acids you must be very smart you can't just eat vegetables and call it a plant-based diet the grains, beans, and legumes, they all create a complete profile of um, you know, all essential amino acids for protein. So always make sure to incorporate those, otherwise you might be deficient in some of the amino acids. Um, okay, and then the last one is my favorite, is the intermittent fasting. I love recommending intermittent fasting. It brings so much mindfulness around what we do in terms of eating and how we do it right so it's because these days food is ubiquitous it's everywhere it's cheap it's accessible it's a source of entertainment wherever we go there's like cheap food the free food and mm, fasting really helps you to see how you know it shouldn't be this way it should food should be intentional it should, it should be um mindful right it should be uh, an activity on its own and now we take it for granted a lot of people are multitasking and doing this and call it a like life because it's socially acceptable mindlessly doing things so fasting really helps to bring out this uh, awareness and my favorite recommendation is to extend on your overnight fast really take the benefits of overnight fast by um you know fasting overnight however many hours it is for you seven to eight and build on that Avoid late night eating and stop eating three to four hours before you go to sleep. And this way you um, end up having at least 12 hours of fast. And with that, see how you feel. Most people feel great. They end up waking up feeling you know, slim and feeling uh, like a flat stomach. 
and uh, have more energy in the morning and with that build on that build up to 14 or 16 hours I really like recommending that that's my go-to and then you can try you can I recommend doing that every day at least 12 hours every day so me myself I try to finish to have dinner around 8 o'clock I'm done with food so I prefer early dinners and I'm usually at the office by 9 so my breakfast is around 8 so that 12 hours is easy for me and whenever I, I am able to have dinner at 6 or 5 and just don't eat afterwards and schedule some activity after dinner whether it's a walk or a movie or a book that, that helps me to sustain um, you know and improve on my fasting and then there's a one meal a day and fasting up to 48 hours. All of this is promoted by, you know, more strict fasting protocols. And this is something that, you know, very personalized. If you feel the need for it, if you're battling some condition, some autoimmunity or um, some, um, you know, inflammation or diabetes, this is something that I would encourage you to try. Just make sure when you stop fasting, you always have the proteins and healthy fats and healthy fibers to break your fast it's very important and um, see how you feel it's very personalized it's not for everyone if you have health conditions definitely check in with your doctor see uh, you know professional opinion but um, it's not my favorite but there's a lot of evidence on like fasting once a week or up to 48 hours uh, people do that but it's for specific conditions very advanced I'm not against it, but I, it's not something that I recommend for everyone. And try it if you feel like it. And just make sure that you know what you're doing when you're breaking the fast. And my goal for this video was to educate you on these diet trends and make sure that for sustainable long-term results, if you're looking to create a better uh, relationship with food consult with your dietitian, reach out to me. I have my ongoing group coaching for gut brain method where I educate people on how to establish new relationship with food by understanding your unique bio individuality really paying attention to your digestion to your metabolism to your food sensitivities food intolerances to your gut health to see what works for you what your body needs uh, you know my program is nine weeks long and so many people have experienced the results and improvements with that and I hope you'll be one of them soon check out the gutbrainmethod.com forward slash welcome for the um, for the page the welcome page and reach out to me on Instagram or via email if you have any questions thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one